Hi there, I'm Trevor and welcome to TH Train and Painting. In this video, Making Hills Part 4, I'm going to show you how to make this wargaming hill for your table. Similar to the hill in Part 3, but this one here has this great looking rock feature sculpted into it and textured to make it look really, really good. So I'm going to show you how to make this. Uh, but to make the basic hill shape, you'll need to check out the Making Hills Part 1 video, which should hopefully, a uh, link will appear somewhere around here. So please check it out first before moving on to this video. So when you're ready, grab your tools and let's get to work. For this hill, I want to do something a bit more interesting by adding a sculpted rock face to this side here. The easiest way to do this is to take a craft knife and cut the shape into the hill and then add some ready-made filler to cover it to create the rock face texture. To create the random rough looking face, I'm going to use my craft knife and remove pieces of polystyrene. I also want to create more random texture which I'll do by just cutting slices out from the hill. Because polystyrene is such a messy beast to work with, I always make sure I've got a rubbish bin nearby to dump all my debris into. The last thing I want to do is to get into trouble for making it look like it's snowing indoors. Let me clear up my worktop before we move on. For this stage I have some ready made filler with some acrylic paint added to it and a stiff bristled paintbrush. Using the paintbrush I'm going to work some of the filler onto the rock face, making sure I get into all the crevices. I'm using the stippling technique to add the filler. The added benefit of this is also create a rocky texture that will also hide the brush strokes. If you get any small circular balls of polystyrene in your rock face, you can either easily remove them or cover them up with some of the filler. Now that's covered, I'll leave it to dry before moving on. As you can see, the ready-made filler is dry, leaving a nice looking rock face for me to work with. To add some texture to the remainder of the hill, I'm going to paint on some PVA glue and coat the model with kiln dried sand. I'll just put down some paper, grab a PVA glue, an old paintbrush and start painting the glue on. I make sure to get the glue on the edges of the rock face as this will help blend the textures together. Also, when I start painting the hill, I will use some dry brushing to blend all this together to make the rock and the ground blend seamlessly together. But for now, I'm just going to give this a good coat of PVA for the sand to adhere to. Before I actually add the sand, I'll just take a smaller brush and add some PVA glue into the areas here and there in the rock face we will just add an extra bit of texture. To add the sand, I'll just pour it all over the hill, making sure I give it a good coat and then leave it to dry. Now the glue is dry, it's ready for painting with some acrylic paint. The first thing I'm going to do is paint the rock face using a dark grey paint. I'm going to paint the whole area, making sure to get into all the crevices of the rock's face.
before I add any more color, I'm going to leave this to dry. Now that the grey paint is dried, using a brush with a reasonably small point, I'm going to add some burnt umber acrylic paint into the crevices and the base of the rock face to simulate dirt. I don't need to worry about being neat as once I start the dry brushing stage all this will get blended away. So now that the paint has been worked into all the crevices of the rock face I'll finish it off by painting the rest of the hill brown. That's all the brown paint added, I'll just wait for it to dry and we'll be ready to dry brush on the next colours. Now that the paint is completely dry, I'm ready to do some dry brushing. The first area I'm going to dry brush is the rock face and for that I'm going to use two shades of grey paint. If you've never done any dry brushing before, click the link in the description below for a quick tutorial. Taking the darker colour first and using a flat brush, I'm going to dry brush the rock face to pick up all the details. I'm not too worried about going into the brown areas as that will actually help with the blending of the rock face into the rest of the hill. I'll also use the grey paint to blend out any of the brown so it no longer looks as jarring as it once was. Now I'll take another brush, slightly smaller than my previous one, and using the lighter grey paint to highlight the edge of the rock face. This will make any of the rocks just pop out a little bit more. I could also add another layer of highlight, you may be using a white paint, but on this occasion I'm happy with the result. Now that the rock face is painted, I can move on to the rest of the hill, which will be dry brush using yellow ochre and buff titanium. With the yellow ochre, I'll apply a heavy dry brush, not being too concerned about touching the rock features as this will help it actually all blend together. I'm not worried if I brush too heavy in any areas. When I add the flock, I can easily cover up any mistakes I've made. As you can see, there are some areas that are lighter than others. That's perfectly fine as the ground in the real world would have tonal shifts in it as well. Now it's time for the buff titanium, I'll just give the hill a light dry brush to pick up some of the more raised areas. Then I'll leave the hill to dry before moving on to the next stage. Now that the paint is all dry, it's time to add some flock. I'll just put down a sheet of paper to make cleaning up easier when I'm done. I'm going to use a watered down PVA glue mixture, 50-50 with some water and then add some flock. Using a paintbrush, I'm going to make sure to get the glue well mixed before adding it to the areas where I want grass to be. I'll just paint the way, moving the glue around, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect and I get some patchiness, that's perfectly fine. When making your own hills, this is the stage where you can decide how much grass you want to put on your hill. 
whether you want it to be covered in flock or patchy, it's entirely up to you. I'm not too concerned if I miss any areas here and there, that's absolutely fine. Now I'm happy with the amount of glue I've put on, it's time to add some flock. To make sure the flock is nice and loose, I'm going to give the container a little shake before I pour it all over the model. Now the model is covered, I'll just leave it to dry. Okay, the PVA glue is now dry. To get rid of the excess flock, just give the model a gentle tap and then use your fingers or paintbrush to brush any away. I'll just put the excess flock back in my container so we can get a better look at the model. And here it is, the completed hill, ready for your tabletop.